Why? Hello and welcome everybody, and good morning as well. I just woke up myself, so uh, today I wanted to go ahead and go over some updates for you guys with what I've done with the Doriani's prototype uh, Mox Waddle Machination Shield. Now I haven't really leveled much. I'm still 96. I don't remember when I made the video, but I actually farmed about 280 Hall of Grandmasters with this build. Turns out Doriani's prototype completely destroys Hall of Grandmasters because everyone's res is yours. Um, made quite a bit of money out of it. Made like 60 to 70 exalts, I'd say. Maybe like closer to 60. Got a uh, House of Mirrors card out of uh, 9 or 10 Immortal cards, and that was like 35x. So today I want to go ahead and just jump into a T16, show you guys what I've done to kind of increase the damage. Now, I will be uh, a lot more tanky here in the near future once I finish uh, getting the helm enchant for this helmet right here because of the 10% of physical from hits taken as chaos. At the moment, I'm still using a pretty shit one. So the main thing I want to bring to the attention of this video is I have done a big swap with uh, four things. Number one, I have dropped the Venter's Gambles. Now, if you're doing Hall of Grand Master Farming for currency, you absolutely want to use Venter's because of the quantity. I mean, in general, the quantity is actually kind of nuts. If you want to push your character to the limits, then you're going to have to drop the Venters. And the reason why is um, the All's Uprising Amulet gives you Wrath for free. So by getting Wrath for free, you can put it with your Empower. So you have a uh, level 23 Divergent RF and a 23 Anomalous Wrath. Uh, you could have 24, but you know, min-maxing, it's only 1% at that point. So uh, by catalysting this with all attributes, it actually puts me at the exact amount of decks I need for my Anomalous Chain. As you can see, 111 to 111. Uh, then, of course, it gives me the Wrath, like I said. Then to make up for it, I use two rings with Fractured Mana. Fractured T2 Mana was only 5C. I'm sure the prices are going to skyrocket after this video. But basically, I got a T2 Mana Fracture on a Pua base. Pua is better than Cerulean for us. Then from here, I catalysted 10 times with Life and Mana Modifier. Then I actually had to open up Harvest for 12C, because if you regal it, it will rip the Catalyst, and you can't alk an item that's blue. So if you take it into Harvest and do any random craft, like, you know, uh, guarantee an attack mod and reforge it. It'll actually keep all your essence or all your uh, Sorry your catalyst. So you save like 130 C then after like five mono regen essence crafts We ended up with duplicate rings. It's a t4 life roll. That's not really that good But I just wanted to get the build running without the venters gambles. Hello, mr. Mini K. How are you doing, bud? Mr. Mini K says hello to you guys Sorry, Mini K. I'm making a video right now all right, let's go ahead and jump into the Chimera map. I don't know why I still have these scraps and stuff on here. I gotta remove them. Oh yeah, this unique box pops up only in Shaper Guardian maps, I think. I'm pretty sure. Oh. Oh. Not too bad, not too bad. Feet waves of enemies. If you can. Vengeance is cold indeed. Your opponents bring night's madness. Faster mobs, faster. Why, Mini K? Be a happy kitty. 
Usually this is petting time in the mornings before the stream for Mr. Mini K. The vapors are inescapable. Take your prize and Okay, so we do also have the <clears throat> the Guardian's Aidna, meaning we will have uh, another Guardian invade us while we are doing this, and then our Guardian will go to full life. Oh, he didn't even do a smoke phase, he just got phased. I didn't even know you could do that, actually. Okay, that's Hydra. Hydra is about to die, I think, already? Where'd you go, Hydra? Oh, there's Hydra. Hydra's dead. This is the key to a nice. That stretches. Okay, now I want to go ahead and jump in a quick shaper map to explain why conversion is so strong in Path of Exile. Sorry, I'm um, Other things that I have done, I'm still using my like five chaos weapon. Uh, the main reason I'm still using my five chaos weapon is I have uh, not enough fire res to drop it. So I would have to most likely drop this thread of hope and then drop this Ellie for like a really good jewel. Um, and that will allow me to switch my weapon. I see. Right, so let's talk about some interesting things here. Because my lightning and my uh, chaos, sorry, my lightning and my cold are fully converted, right? I do not get affected by penetration. So because I don't get affected by penetration, those are like some of the scariest effects when it comes to endgame boss encounters. As an example, Shaper's triple ball that he shoots, I believe has built in like 25 cold pen. I think one of Uber Elder attacks or Elder has cold pen. Um, I believe at Ziri might have lightning pen on her storm calls or maybe only it's Uber. Um, but yeah, you get the point. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, really spooky penetration mechanics tied to bosses. But when you fully convert, you don't get affected by penetration of that element because you don't take that damage. Meaning to hurt my character uh, or to be affected by pen, I would need fire pen or chaos pen. And even fire pen is only 50% effective uh, because 50% of my fire gets hit as chaos. So that's three balls with a slam with no arcane cloak. The beam does hurt us, but when I get a better belt, the beam won't hurt us anymore. Because when I get a better belt with T1 mana recovery, with T1 life recovery, life recovery will scale the fat multiple, the fat life uh, recovery I get from the agnostic notable. And then on top of that, Life recovery will scale our leech and over leech from our Mox Waddle. So I'm pretty sure I'll be able to face tank the Shaper Beam with a new belt. Here 
You're not being very nice today, Mini K. Why? I had to move there, but you know, that was five balls, so. The dual recovery, I probably wouldn't have had to. I mean, I probably would have been fine there still, you know, I just. You know, spook. God damn, everybody wants all these sales in the morning. I like waited for like 10 minutes before I made this video. Nobody whispered me. Within five minutes of the video, I get PM. I don't want to kill him yet. I want to show the ball phase, but there we go. Okay. So I'm pretty sure these little balls have penetration as well. Ooh, a little spook there, but, you know, Arcane Cloak fell off, I think. And that's pretty much the character, boys. Um, I will work on pushing this character further and further since it's really fun right now. I have to recraft my rings for like T1 life. I have to definitely recraft my belt. Might look at some double balls for my boots. I'll have to get an Essence of Horror glove eventually. Still running lab for my helm enchant. And then we need a new weapon. So that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can always catch me streaming live but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. Also, Last Epoch is having a, I think, 20% sale on my Nexus, uh, or every content creator's Nexus, so you can definitely check it out there. We do play the game usually every big content patch. I'm just taking a little break because I've played it so much in the past, but the patch for Endgame really does look awesome. So take care, have a wonderful time, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. You're not very nice, Mr. Minikay.